Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be completing another reverse engineering crack me program. Just keep in mind that these crack me's that I complete are are uh, made to be cracked and they're not real programs, obviously. Just a disclaimer out there. These were designed to be cracked open. That's pretty much the whole point of doing these. So in this uh, video, I'm actually going to be completing another crack me here. This is another simple one. Uh, uh, this one's on a different website. This one's called crackmes.1 and I will leave the link uh, in the description or the comments for this so you can follow along. This one's called Pride Cracks, Cracks C by Pride. Uh, I don't know what originally it's called, but it's called Pride or something like that. And this is using the C or C++ language. Uh, and it's a 32-bit, so it's 32-bit and yeah, so let's go ahead and get right into it. So yeah, I already downloaded, extracted it. I have it ready to go. I'm actually gonna be using um, X32 debug for this one. We're not gonna be using Ida or Ghidra or anything like that. We're just gonna use X32 debug. So if you don't have that, make sure you guys download that. Uh, before we get started, I just wanna mention that I already went through this program and cracked it just to make sure um, it was pretty simple and also just so that whenever I'm doing the tutorial here I'm, I'm not gonna take two hours to crack it open Honestly, it was a quick one. It takes me about 30 minutes to do so once you get it right here Open up your x32 debug since this is a 32-bit um, uh, Application I will go ahead and grab it and just drag it in just like this Okay, once you do that uh it should load up like this. Uh, I also forgot one thing. Okay, but before we do this, let's launch the program up, okay? Let's just see what this program does before I do all of that. I'm getting ahead of myself here. Okay, so when we open it up, we see the program is asking for a name, so we're gonna put in a name such so as... Okay, so once we put Bob, it's gonna ask us for a serial key and we can put anything we want in here. One, two, three, whatever, four, five, six. Similar to the last one I did. Uh, but if you press enter, we can see it says false serial key. Press any key to continue. So when we press this key, boom, just like that. So it seems that it's making a system call there to exit. So it's using um, this system call right here. MSVCRT system to work. It just allows it to ma uh, manage input and output operations. So that's useful to know because um, we can actually search for that in X32 debug. This system call MSVCRT.system. So let's go look for that right now. Okay, so now we can drag in our program. And that's closed. So we drag it in. And then we're using X32 debug, so it'll open up here like this since it reached the breakpoint, which is the system start breakpoint. But don't worry about that for now. We're gonna go ahead and right click um, on the open space right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and press on search for all modules, and I'm gonna look for intermodular calls. In here, we actually wanna look for, or I'm just gonna press on destination like that and you could scroll through our I would recommend to search our msvcrt.system whoops and we should have one right here double click into this and now let's scroll up a little bit and there you go so we see we have a mega keychain right serial and false serial i already went through here and added some extra comments through throughout because i already cracked it let's go ahead and just start over as if we were just looking at this program from scratch so let's go down to right serial key because obviously this is what we want we want the right serial key so let's see what occurs um at right serial key right before that we see we have a jump not equal and in order to jump not equal in order for this to jump jumps down here Right before that, we see a compare. We're comparing 
EAX comparing what's at EBP minus 30 to what's at e to EAX. So we're comparing something on the stack at EBP minus 30 to EAX. And then we're determining if we're jumping or not. Obviously, we don't want to jump. We want this to continue here, which means this would have to be equal for it to continue here. Okay, so now what I will now what I'm going to be doing is we're going to set a breakpoint at this line right here, the jump equals line, because I want to see what um, what uh, EAX is being compared. So I want to know what this is comparing with EAX. So what are these two comparing? So once I do that, I set a breakpoint here. All I have to do is press on this button, run. Uh, let me go ahead and open up the program here. I'm gonna hit run. I hit it again. All right, so now it's telling me enter my name. I put Bob, press enter, ask me for a serial key, and I'm gonna put in one, two, three, four, five, whatever. You put any number in here. Let's put one, three, four, five, six. I press enter, and we've hit our breakpoint, which is good. And obviously, remember we need we needed to look at EAX, right? So let's go ahead and look at EAX. We go over here into our registers. We see EAX. I'm gonna double click, and what do we see here? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so that's interesting. Remember, we typed in one, two, three, four, five, six as our serial. So it looks like that we're on the right track. We're comparing our input with whatever is at um, EBP minus 30. So let's go ahead and look at EBP minus 30. So let's go ahead and scroll up a little bit. EBP minus 30. Uh, here it is, EBP minus 30. So interestingly, EBP minus 30 is holding a value of EAX. Okay, so we know that EBP minus 30 holds a value of EAX, the old value, and and then we know that user input changes e, EAX. So let's put we want but we want the original EAX. Um because we're comparing it against what's over here. So we know this original EAX must be the, the key that we need then. So let's go ahead and put a breakpoint. Or actually, yeah, let's put a breakpoint here. And that way we can get, we can stop the program here and we can take the, the uh, value at EAX that's right in here. So in order to do that, I do have to restart the program. Um, I don't really use extra 2 debug that much. So I don't know the commands a lot. So I always end up having to restart the program like this. And that way we reset it. And then I get to go back and search for intermodular calls. And then obviously the tabs get saved. So I can double click it. All right, let's go back. So I set my breakpoint here. So that way we can see what the original value of EAX was. Um, so let's go ahead and run the program. Double we'll press on here. Uh, let's see if anything happened. Nope, we have to press it twice. Okay, so now we put in our name. I'm gonna put Bob again. Enter. And we hit ourselves the breakpoint. Okay, so that means we're, we're, we're on here. Now we can go see what EAX is. I'll double click into EAX. And we have this uh, this number, 6454189. So let's copy this. Because remember, we're, we're comparing our input to the original EAX value. So let's go ahead and press OK. Whatever. And then I'm going to go ahead and remove this. Actually, I can continue. I can press here. OK, now let's me put a serial key. Let's try this. Let's see, does this work? I'm gonna enter, continue. Yep, it works. So now it's asking me to make a keygen. Okay, so in order to make a keygen, we need to know 
how EAX gets to be the value it is in the first place. Also, if you want to look up here, this is also the new EAX value. That's so we can confirm. Now it wants us to make a key gen. In order to make a key gen, we need to know how EAX gets its original value. So we know that EAX gets stored right here, the original value. So let's look above that. I wonder if I, can I zoom into this? There you go. It should be easier to see now. Okay. Above that, we see we we also are this hex value 3D AD 40F with EAX, and above that we add uh, CA to EAX. Above that, we call a function. We make a function call up here. I already looked through this function call, and I'll tell you right now, this function call will get to the name length. So basically. When we enter in our name here, um, it uh, it counts the amount of characters. So one, two, three, and it'll store that into EAX, into the EAX register. I think I looked through at it and I was able to find that pretty easily. And then a string length on there to get the string length of name, and then to store that into the register EAX. So three, one, two, three, and. After that, what's going to happen here is we're going to be adding CA, which is hex, which is a number in hex. I'm not sure. Okay, I don't know. Let's hex to binary or decimal, I mean. Whoops. And hex to decimal and 0xCA. Invert. So 202. And our other number is 3D. 8D40F. That's big number 64,541,711. Okay, so I'm here in my notepad. And so the first thing we need to define is a variable x. So I guess we could say int bar x or just int x equals um which is our length of our name, so like name length. So I'm just doing pseudocode here, but name length, which could be four, or, or in our case it was three because I put Bob. And after that, we're adding in and we're adding CA to it. So we're gonna go x x equals x plus uh, zero zero x c a. That's how you would do it. Zero x c a. Whoops. A. And then x is going to equal to xor 3d. So 0x 3d 8d uh, 40f. 0f. So this is pretty much what occurs in here so we can easily create a key gen using python okay i'm here in my vm for linux and i'm gonna type in here python should have it installed okay so we can insert a new thing i'm gonna call it length equals it search a number so this is the length of our name so let's say we originally had Bob. Let's try something that's four or five letters. Let's do cat or not a cat's three letters. Uh, let's do bread. Okay, bread. Okay, B R E A D. What is that? Five letters. And I guess we could print length. I think we do print and then length just like that. Five. Yep. And remember. We needed to add 0xca to it. So let's copy this real quick. So I do length equals length length plus this value 0xca, not 5, I don't know what I'm saying. Then I can print length again. Let's just, we could probably just, whoops, to print length. I did break it 207. And our final thing we need to do is uh, 
XOR length. So length is now 207. So now we do length is equal to length, length, XOR by this number here, this X number. So paste clipboard and press enter. Now we can print length and it's this number. Now let's go ahead and copy this and let's head back to our program. Okay, so I'm gonna have to restart the program here. Okay, so once a name, remember we said bread. It doesn't matter, any five letter word would work. Enter, I'll continue. Enter serial, and we should be able to paste this serial in. Let's press enter. And next. And boom, there you go. Just like that, guys. We were able to crack open this program, figure out how it works, uh, and uh, generate a keygen simply by using X32 Debug. Last video I used Ida Pro, this time I used X32 Debug. This time we didn't have to patch the program or anything like that. We just debug and, and work our way through the program. But this time we actually used the original program and just hacked our way through. So yeah guys, so that's pretty much all I, all I got for the video. If you guys enjoy, drop a like, do all that good stuff. And um, next video, I don't know, but I was currently working on a, a hook that hooks onto the Steam overlay for games to inject cheats and stuff like that. But I don't know, I can't get it to work, but well, I'm going to keep working on that. Right now it's almost 2 a.m., but I'm mean, probably up to like 4 grinding through that thing and trying to get it to work. Hopefully I can get that for next video. If not, we'll have another uh, crack me thing or... I think I'm going to do some something else. All right. Well, that's pretty much all I got. See you all in the next one.